Now we're going to start today the demo on using the parallel technique to take periapical radiographs, anterior and in the posterior region. First thing that we have to do is we have to set our exposure first, and after that we have to cover the patient with a lead apron. Okay, ask the patient if you've had any previous record of radiation. And to do that, we have a run holder that we use, one to do anterior teeth and one to do posterior teeth. Start by using the parallel technique to take periapical radiographs on your patient. First thing that we have to do is we have to set the exposure factors before we start. Then seat your patient, greet and seat your patient, cover your patient with a lead apron. Which we've done. Ask your patient if he's had any previous record of radiation. Because it's very important, because sometimes patients have been here but they don't tell you, so you must always make sure and check in the patient's folder the patient had previous record of radiation. Then check your patient's mouth, remove all the removable appliances from the mouth that we have to do. Now your patient is ready, now we can start taking the periapicals. Now my basic principle is that your form should be parallel to the long axis of the tooth and your central ray is directed perpendicular to both the tooth and the form. Now to do the parallel technique, we use what we call a rin holder, one to take anterior teeth and one to take posterior teeth. Now this is a picture of what a rin holder looks like. The rin holder, one to take your anterior teeth and one to do the posterior teeth. As you can see, it's different colors. The anterior one is the blue one and the posterior teeth is the, the yellow one. If I open this, my run holder consists of three different parts. Always open it in front of your patient so your patient can see it's not something that is again in anybody else's mouth. anterior one got my your anterior bite block which is you can see it's like the size of your anterior form we've got what we call our indicator rod and then my locator ring so if I put it together this will fit in like that and my locator ring so if I look at my bite block my bite block is in the center so the and my cone is going to fit on here so that means I won't cut anything off so now that I've got my ring I can do start with taking my uh, maxillary anteriors if we do the maxillary anteriors we take five radiographs all together take the two central incisors on one form the laterals on either side and then the canines we do the lowers, we only do three. We take our four incisors on one form, your mandibular anteriors, and then your canines on either side. Now, why do we only take three in your mandibular region? Because you find your maxillary anterior teeth are much bigger. So you can only fit, your incisors will only fit on, your two centrals will fit on one form. That's why we have to do the lateral separately, and then the canines, okay? So now, if I want to take a periapical radiogram, this is my anterior form. This is the front of the form. This is going to face the patient. And that is the back of the form. You can see this little dot here, which is for identification purposes. Now, if I look at this, I can see this is an ultra speed form. That means it's a slower form. So we must make sure that our exposure is set for an ultra speed form, which is usually 0.4 of a second. Now, when we position the form in the bite block, front of the form, the simple side, faces the x-ray tube, we have the dot facing the occlusal surfaces. Now why do we have the dot facing the occlusal surfaces? Because if there's any pathology, we must make sure that it does not interfere with the apices. Okay, so that's why we have it towards the occlusal surfaces. Now we have to position this in the patient's mouth. With the cotton The cotton we usually position 
on the opposite side, which is just for patient comfort and stability. So if I do the maxillary teeth, it's going to be on your mandibular teeth. You open for me. Now, because my film, my basic principle says that your film should be parallel to the long axis of the tooth, I can't put the film against the tooth. I've got to put it further back into the palate. Patient has this back, and the patient must bite on your bite. Cotton roll at the bottom, your patient is supposed to bite. What is very important is that when your patient bites, we must make sure that the teeth are centered on the bite block. Because a lot of time patients, what they do is, they just close their lips and they tell you they're biting. And then when you take the radiograph and you close it, you see that the apices are cut off. So it's very important that your patient should bite on the bite block. And then also the teeth that you will want should be centered on the bite block. Like we're doing the two central incisors now. So the two central incisors should be centered on the bite block. And we direct our x-ray cone so that my central ray is directed perpendicular to my form. Now what I use as a guide, I always make sure that my cone is parallel to my indicator rod. If my cone is parallel to my indicator rod, then I know my central ray is perpendicular. I look at this. Now, my cone is parallel. I'll just get this to fit on here. Okay. My cone should be parallel to my indicator rod. Then I know my central ray is perpendicular. So vertical angulation, central ray perpendicular to your form and as you can see if we do the maxillary region your tube is facing down now so we say if it's facing down we call it a positive angulation you look at the side here we can see there's the angles here facing down so it's a positive vertical angulation we always stand in front of your tube and make sure in your horizontal angulation that your ray is perpendicular also to your form or perpendicular to the buccal surface of the tooth. Because if I do this now, what's going to happen? It's not going to be perpendicular and you're going to get overlapping of the teeth. Also, what's going to happen if I have my tube like this? You can see my ray is not perpendicular to my form. It's not going to be, because I look at my cone and I look at my indicator. Right? So my image is going to be elongated. Or if I use excessive vertical angulation like this, like okay? that, you can see, this is not, but my image is going to be foreshort. And if I look at now, if I look at my cone, my basic principle says that my central ray should be perpendicular to my form form should be parallel to the long axis of the tooth. You can see in the mouth that the form is parallel to the long axis of the tooth. If I bring it closer, it's not going to be parallel to the tooth. So we've actually got a larger object form distance. That's why we must make sure that we increase the source, your source form distance. Now that is if we do our two central incisors. Now we can do, if we want to do the lateral incisor, your form position will be the same. The only thing that we do now is that we get, make sure that we position it so that my lateral is in the center of my form. Okay. Open again for me. Okay. Your patient can be in any comfortable position as long as your center is perpendicular to your form and your, your form is parallel to the long axis of the tooth because you've got your rin holder to guide you. So it doesn't matter, your patient can be in any comfortable position. That is, if you want to do the lateral, lateral in the center, and you can see, your cone is parallel to indicator. So now your central is perpendicular. I want to do my canine now. Get my canine in the center. In our maxillary region, you can see all the, in all the views that the, um, all your views is, your tube is facing down. So we say if we do the maxillary region, it's a positive vertical angulation. 